Hey everyone, this is Jove, and we're back with another tutorial here on how to install XEMU, the Xbox original emulator for PC. And we're continuing a series here where I'm adding all of my emulators to a side computer that I have here. Uh, this one's going to be strictly just for emulation. And here we are at the XEMU website. And it's pretty straightforward. It's an Xbox original emulator. It is open source, gamepad support, and supports render scaling. And as you can see, they have really good compatibility with a lot of games. Up to 62% are playable and 2% are perfect. So we're going to go ahead and download this. Download the Windows version. To our downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip it. And we're going to launch it. And on your first launch, you're going to be greeted with this screen. It says to get started, please configure machine settings. You have to go into settings here and you're going to have to get a BIOS file, move run file, and a hard disk image file. Now, I can't tell you exactly where to get them, but I'm going to point you out to somewhere where it can help you get them at the emulation wiki. I'll leave a link to this in the uh, description. But really what you want to do is look for their FAQs. And we're looking here at the FAQ. File some files for emulators. And they should uh, guide you on how to obtain the BIOS files for the Xbox. And it's very simple. You just look for XEMU. Now, once you've obtained your BIOS file and hard disk image, we're going to go ahead and let the uh, app here know where everything is. So I'm going to go to Browse. And I'm going to go to Downloads. Xbox BIOS and I'm going to use this one as this one is the most uh, the one that's been known to work the best with this emulator and that is the 4627 debug we're going to get the MCPX boot file here and it's often the same pack if you follow the steps and a hard disk image file we have in our downloads here I like to make the system memory 128, but it's not necessary if you don't need to. And I like to skip the startup animation as well. I'm going to hit save. It's telling us to restart the emulator to apply the changes. We'll close this. Close this. We'll go back in here. I'm going to create a shortcut on the desktop. We're going to send to desktop. Okay, now it's asking us to put an Xbox disc in. What you're going to need for games here is an Xbox ISO image. Now, it's not just going to be any ISO image. If you happen to uh, make your own, you're going to have to do an X ISO image. If you happen to find one online and you notice that it's a big file, such as a 7.4 gigabyte disc file, that may not work with this and I'm going to give you an example right now. So here on my desktop, I have a dead or alive three ISO file. And if I hover over it, you'll see that it's a 7.28 gigabyte file, which is weird because if you create a folder and you drop it into the folder, it'll show a bigger size. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up. Desktop, new folder. A lot of times you'll have to uh, either reset or close the application and open it again. This disk 
like I know it won't, does not work because this is not an X ISO format. I'm gonna eject disk. We're gonna load a disk that I know works. And here I'm gonna use Jetset Radio Future. We'll hit machine and reset. And I'm gonna mute this because of the music. But as you can see, this version of the game works. It is it it is in an X ISO format. And I'm gonna show you the difference in size here. These games come in the actual game file sizes. So it actually cuts out all the uh, dead data that's in or dummy data that's in the disks. So I understand that a game like Dead or Alive is actually about three and a half gigs without all the dummy data in it. So here we have Jet Set Radio Future playing in the background. And what you want to do is have a controller plugged in or plug in a controller. We'll go to input and it'll show you that there's no controller connected. However, I do have my Xbox controller connected. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Exit put controller. And you can actually test it from here. All right, we'll close that out. I'll maximize it here. And I want to show you the performance of the game as well. So we'll go to video here. And I'll make this box a lot smaller. It doesn't need to be that big. You can see the numbers here, 59. I'm going to go ahead and start up a game. All right, now we see that the game is running at about 60 frames per second. And this is just with the uh, base resolution of the game. So with this, this is where we can experiment. I'm going to move to a different part of the map here. And I'm going to bump up the scale to 3x. That makes a huge difference if you can uh, bump that scaling up. Now I have a two gigabyte GTX 770. And it's capable of handling this 3x scaling on this game. Jump back into the game. And it will depend, you know, on the game you're playing. Some games are rougher to play than others. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and change the game. I'm gonna play a different one here, Halo, I'm at Evolved. Chief, please look around the room. I need to get a calibration reading for your battlesuit's diagnostics. Good. Thank you, sir. I'm bringing your health monitors online, sir. Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn. Okay, sir. Go ahead and climb out of the cryotube. All right, and as we can see, Halo is working. As you can notice, this game runs at 30 frames per second. Okay. Now, with that being said, that's pretty much about it. So if you found this video helpful, give the video a like. 
if you want to see me continue to install more of my emulators on the secondary computer that I have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with these uh, tutorials. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.